Some stories begin with once upon a time, but it was a dark and stormy night in little China here. Right, Can you complete the monologue? Dark and stormy night, and was it? I, you know, you got me a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, uh, that's a tale, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it huddled in the cab of the yeah. truck, the rain coming down, yeah. the pork chop express on its way. That's and pretty he just, nice. It really is. I mean, he, he gets going and gets into a, I don't know, it's fun to see... Uh, a movie start out one way and then start to slide into another and then really, you know, really take off. <laughs> Until by the time we're almost done, during the biggest fight of the movie, you're flat on your back. He's out. That's Starts out as the guy who knows it all and just, uh, boy, he just wishes he could come through. And he can't. I mean, he's just incapable of, he's incapable of doing uh, these great deeds that he you know, thinks well, he Well, you've got a great do. comedy touch. Why Thank haven't you. we seen you? doing more comic work? Well, you know, uh, I started out, you know, a lot of the things I did earlier on That's with the Disney's, Disney, yeah. uh, and they were light comedy, but I didn't get to play the character that carried the comedy. Usually a guy named Mike McGreevy did that. Uh, in Used Cars, uh, that was again a comedy, but not seen by a lot of people on its initial uh, theatrical release, but a favorite of mine. Uh, Best of Times is a picture that, uh, that again, didn't do well on its theatrical release. Uh, but it was a step toward what, I'm, what I did here. Well, when you this flash your teeth as Reno. Could you sit back in your chair? Am I doing that again? Okay. Which one did I just I'm not lifting the chair as far as Okay, because it's hard for me not to. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll just have to hold a wider yeah. shot for you. All right. Is that okay? What? Oh, we're, leave, we're sure? wasting time. I'll just sit back here. Okay, I don't want to stop any longer. Okay. okay. But as Reno Hightower, you do have that great moment with you flash the teeth. Now, we're oh, yeah. catching a little of Jack Burton there, I think. Uh, you know, well, it's, it, you know, Reno had it going at one time, I mean, you know. But the comedy there is a, uh, it's certainly not as broad. It's not as, uh, it's not as uh, wide open as, as this picture is. This picture is, you know, a whole movie that's big and fun and huge. Everybody's... It, the whole feeling is fun. So I think Jack, it, it allows a character like uh, Jack Burton to be much more overblown. And, and, and you can have more fun with a character. Now, and like I that. would guess that you would probably be as excited as anybody about poking fun at your own character. That, you know, that's the thing that's fun. I mean, I, I thought, what, what a good time this would be. I mean, it might be cutting off my head and cutting off my nose to spite my face, but what a good time it is to play the lead and then be the butt of, be the butt of your own joke. Uh, I think that, well, I've never seen that before. Yeah. You know, I've never seen that, that character where the guy takes and off. And so consistently done. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, anyway, I thought, well, let's, let's see what this is like. John wanted to... Uh, Wanted to do that with the character. Wanted to. Wanted to. I, I. I was surprised by that. I thought maybe John would say, "Well, wait a minute. We can't. You mm -hmm. know, this guy's got to lead the way." But not at all. John said, "Yeah, I want to. I want to take this guy out there, because if he's not that big, he'll get left behind in the movie." And I understood then what really what kind of movie John was wanting to make. After four films with him, what have you learned from him, and what has he learned from you, maybe too? Oh, I. Uh, I think that uh, I've learned that, uh, first of all, I have learned a great deal about a, a particular man's style of, of directing. Uh, it's a style that I like. And um, I guess I've also learned that uh, when you feel confident yourself and safe in the hands of, of somebody else, uh, you, can do some, you can do some stuff that's, that's, that, that, that comes off well. I felt that way with Mike Nichols, felt that way with, with uh, Bob Zemeckis. I mean, I, I, there are guys that I felt that confident with, but I have a relationship with John in, in the movies that we've done together. He told me that he thought that you could trust him. What do you suppose he right. meant by that? Right. I can. I. It's it's an old thing that actors say about directors that they like, and it's there's a reason that it's old. It's very true. You know, I feel like if John asks me to do something, that I don't have to question why he wants it. I'll just try to f just try to f just try to do it. I'll just try to find exactly what it is he wants and do it because if it's not going to work, he'll be the first one to say, "Nah, it doesn't work." But it, yeah, and he doesn't always want the same things from you. This is no. a great leap from Snake Plissken. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, Snake Snake's a handy guy. Uh, 
Old Snake, you, you know, Snake's not afraid to walk anywhere, and he, and he does get out of the situation of his own volition. This guy is, I mean, he looks like he's not afraid, but you know he is because he's human, and man, he's got no idea but, how to get out of the situation. But when he takes the potion and yeah. you're standing in the oh, elevator. Oh yeah, he sees things no one else can see. Makes I mean. you feel kind of <laughs> kind of invincible. Yeah, right. I mean, he's, he's, that was know, real nice. He uses all the things that he can, and uh, again, I think that having uh, the reins being held by John in this movie made me feel very comfortable. Last question, was there a time during the shooting when you were surrounded by rockets and things going off and people flying on wires and you said, what is this? You know, I, I, all the way through the movie you got me wandering through and trying to, you know, coming into scenes that everybody's already there, coming in and saying, relax, I'm here, take it easy. <laughs> you know, I thought that it hit me in the last scene. I thought, man, this guy has been through everything. He just he, he's totally lost now. He's 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 days raring to go, but he's just gone. I mean, he has no idea what's happening. And I, I'll tell you, you know, sitting in that in that set at the end, it, I knew that I knew this movie had to be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, because it was too. It was and too you're hearing that from there. audiences now too, aren't you? Yeah. Already. Yeah. yeah. Kurt well, Russell. It's good. It's good, good to talk you with again. you again. Uh, Feels. Kind of invincible, as he says, <laughs> at Big Trouble in Little China. And I'm John Tibbetts in New York City for KCTV5.